It's the greatest show on earth, a fireworks display that's lasted 15 years. The Kilauea volcano in Hawaii is an awesome spectacle, as beautiful as it is frightening. Since 1983, millions and millions of tons of lava have spilled from its crater. So much lava, in fact, that more than half a kilometre has been added to the coastline. And from the very first day of eruptions, Kilauea has been revealing secrets, revealing insights into lava flows that have had billion dollar implications for Australia. Down under that steam and smoke, Kilauea is erupting. But it's not from the air you see the fireworks. It's down on the coast, 15 kilometres away. The volcano has been active so long, it has burrowed tunnels in the mountainside for the lava to escape, oozing like honey out into the sea. I have a mix of emotions just standing here. Knowing that something like three metres below me is a flowing river of lava makes me feel a little apprehensive. And there's this scene of total devastation around me where lava has literally cleared everything in its path for kilometres. But then when I look into what seems like the soul of the earth, I have this renewed respect for what's going on around here. Volcanologist Jim Kawaikikawa has monitored the mountain since the first day of the eruption. He's one of a team from the US Geological Survey who've set up shop right on Kilauea. And as the molten lava is turned by water into rock, Jim's watched dangerous benches of slowly cooling lava become part of the landmass. This is a pretty unsafe area to be in. That's right. Um, we're trying to minimize our time here to minimize our risk. Uh, but we are on the older bench, which is a bit more stable than the thing behind me. That would be an absolute no-no to be on. And we have lost uh, one person in April 94 who uh, ventured out onto a bench like the one behind me uh, at a time, unfortunately, when it decided to depart the coastline. Um, his body uh, was never found. When this current eruption began, way back in 1983, lava shot from deadly fountains out of the summit some 500 metres into the sky. Highways were cut, towns destroyed. The volcano stopped life and civilization in its tracks. But in Western Australia, one scientist studied the pictures with more than passing interest. The lava in Hawaii is so similar in the way its process has taken place. But of course, it's a good place to come away. Yeah, Rob, if you'd record for me, uh, we'll go over to the middle of the line. No worries, mate. Dr. Robin Hill, a CSIRO geologist, came to Kilauea with a strange theory to test. He suspected parts of Australia were long ago formed exactly by the Kilauea-type forces that are transforming Hawaii today. I enjoy being here because I'm thinking not only of what's happening here, but what has happened three billion years ago when I'm walking over the lavas, and I try to transfer everything that I see to an environment that I see in Western Australia. But there's no doubt about it, this was a volcano once. Yes, this is a volcano. And um, the lava was passing over this surface uh, as a sheet of lava, flying reasonably quickly and very hot probably 1,500 degrees centigrade of that order. 
But Dr Hill's interest wasn't simply academic. From studying Kilauea's lava temperatures and the geology resulting from it, he was able to return home to Kalgoorlie and pinpoint, as no one had before, where valuable deposits of nickel could be found. We think that the processes of formation of nickel deposits occurred within the hottest parts or the conduits for lava transport. And um, it makes me feel quite excited when I see the same rock relationships in the present and active volcanic activity as I see in Western Australia. His discovery has revolutionised the nickel industry. For this hugely valuable Australian export, exploration times have been cut from decades to weeks and huge deposits found. One, now being mined at Silver Swan, is valued at a cool $6 billion. Our nickel industry in Western Australia is poised to become the third largest producer of nickel in the world. And the potential for find more deposits is very high. And the more that we can add value to make the exploration program more effective, the happier I feel. I think we have a significant role to play in the future of the nickel industry in Western Australia. Kilauea is slowly giving up all manner of secrets. Jim Kawaiki Kaur and his colleagues have spent so much time studying it, they've learned how to predict its every mood, its every mood. Yet still, it's hazardous work. fill the viewfinder with the fluid then you press the trigger and it will tell you what the temperature is and it should read over a thousand or so. Now you have to be a little careful of this thing. Yeah so I need to get I need to get closer on it than you. I have to hold my gun steady that's what I'm finding. Yeah right you see through the viewfinder. Oh. Oh. That got the eyes. <laughs> You okay? Uh, yes, no, that really <laughs> burnt me, I've got to tell yeah. you. Which is what you were worried about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just out of the corner of your eye, you gotta watch, you know, you can see the, the shimmer there. Mm. <clears throat> Holy cow. I think that was about eleven hundred <laughs> that got me in the face. Five oh. meters seemed so far away. Until you looked at the temperature gauge, one thousand and sixty six degrees it read. The temperature of a blast furnace. Eyelashes. <laughs> Thank God I put the mascara on, huh? <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> you might have protected Safety them a fraction. <laughs> this is necessary but dangerous work. The crust around the skylight into the lava channel is brittle. Up. There you go, go down. A fair amount of bravado was involved in fishing for a sample of molten lava. 1,100 degrees of it and spitting mad at being disturbed. So what do you do with this now, Jim? We'll uh, wait till it cools off enough so that it won't burn the bag. I'll uh, we'll put it in a canvas bag and mark down date and time and where we got the sample from. Then it'll go back to the lab and they'll uh, uh, break it off into smaller chunks and make a thin section out of it so they can look through it. And they'll also uh, send it off to uh, the mainland for uh, microprobing. And then there's the gas, the filthy mix of poisonous sulfurous fumes that rise in the steam of the lava. At the moment, this whole crater is in the process of caving in. But the equipment needs checking, so the scientists need to brave the foul air and hope upon hope the wind doesn't change and blow the fumes their way. If you didn't wear one of these, what would happen? Uh, well, the sulfur gas is fatal in high enough concentration, so this only handles up to about 80 parts per million of the sulfur gas, which, uh, you know, if, this, if we were in the full brunt of this plume, that would not do anything, really. And so, you know, you're just using it to buy yourself time to get out. So if this, which we can see now, mm -hmm. turned this way, 
It'd be a case of put this on quickly and run. Yeah, while you're running, put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I understand fully. <laughs> Incredible as it may seem, life goes on in the towns and valley farmhouses below the mighty volcano. The shooting starts. Everyone is affected now and then by the clouds of sulphur. But there are some families who choose to live right in the thick of things. Well, if the winds are cooperating, we get just a nice visual show. You see the glow, and, and if it's really fountaining high, you can see the fountaining from there too. Um, once we come in here, we see a glow off our bedroom window at night. Anthony and Coy Lee live with their son Henele less than four kilometres from Kilauea's main vent. For them, it makes for an exciting life, but with some drawbacks. There have been mornings we've woken up and you can't see the trees in the back. Okay, I'm, it's That's a thick. thick orange cloud. There's also, for the Lees, the not insignificant possibility their home will literally be consumed by lava. In 1990, it happened on the other side of the mountain. The village of Kalapana simply ceased to exist. A house and a few trees is all that's left of Kalapana now. A lot of Australians would look at you and say, you're mad. Oh, really? <laughs> you're crazy. You've got a volcano in your backyard. It's great. You know, Hawaii's beautiful. Rainbows, you see the best rainbows you ever see anywhere. It's beautiful here. In Earth terms, Hawaii is still but a child, still growing and forming. And mighty Kilauea is still resisting attempts to tame it or understand it, but filling with awe all those who come in contact with it. It's an active volcano, and there is something that's happening before our very eyes that's adding information, not only scientific information for geology, but it's also it's adding part of the the earth, it's adding, adding value because it's adding ground, and that, that amazes me.